Welcome back to the Power Drift podcast. This is episode three, and I'm joined by the newest member at Power Drift, Ronak Ajinkya. Welcome, welcome to Power Drift. Thank you. Good to be here. How are you doing, man? I'm fine. Uh, it's been a hectic couple of weeks at Power Drift. Uh, joined very recently. Yeah. Probably like I think it was the first of October. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just been one thing after the other, just relentless. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've joined uh, on the first of October, and I actually didn't get, didn't get to meet you. Until like what, 15th? Or until maybe like, like a couple a few, of days ago. Yeah, yesterday, few, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, yesterday, in yesterday. Fact. So yeah, it's been like yeah, 20 yeah. days. There's been a lot of traveling that's happening at Power Drift. Yeah. How was your first shoot, man? What was your experience like? Wow, the first shoot was, uh, yeah, like straightly, I mean straight, just dove, dove in. And yeah. it was a little ridiculous because it was, uh, I think, around a 11-day shoot. Yeah. Now, I come from a very different background. I'm usually from the magazine shoots mm -hmm. kind of style. So... That's a little different. You <laughs> a long shoot over there is essentially what two days tops, yeah. and then you're done, and yeah. the rest of it is just up to the designers and the people who do the layouts. Right. But this was just a whole different, whole different this thing yeah. experience so, for me. So that video is actually live on our channel. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you guys haven't seen it, then you should probably Please do. go. Please do. On YouTube, check it out. Check out Rona Kajinkya. Yeah. So also. Just to notice, it's my debut, so please be a little easy on me. Yeah, uh, I'm sure we'll see a lot of you on, on Power Drift, I mean, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. In fact, I had a line on the video that said exactly yeah. that, so yeah. let's hope. <laughs> now, this is actually the first conversation that I'm having, like a meaningful conversation with you on, you know, how your journey has actually started and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. why don't we tell the audience, like how it all started for you? What is your sure. journey like? Sure, sure. So <laughs> I think um, I've had a fairly interesting kind of fun seven years so far yeah. uh, it actually started for me in 2012 and uh, that's when I graduated mm -hmm. uh, it f I mean I started off with this little magazine called Autocar India I don't know if any of you have heard of it yeah. but yeah <laughs> not so little yeah but uh, yeah it was a good proving ground uh, good place to learn good place to learn our basics everything yeah. and uh, yeah essentially that taught me just how this entire field works and um that was a stint of nearly two years, after which I think the serious growing up started for me because I joined this other place called Motoring World Magazine. Uh, fantastic place, fantastic team, um, just un I mean, innumerable learning experiences, uh, all great. And uh, yeah, I mean, I enjoyed the heck out of the five and something months that I mm -hmm. spent there. And uh, but after a certain point, I decided, you know, I've done this, kind of uh, had enough of it and uh, not in a bad way, obviously, no. but I was just kind of looking at a different challenge as such. Yeah. And uh, going by how video goes nowadays, uh, I think Power Drift was the obvious choice. And thankfully, yeah. I lucked into a, an interview with Rohan. Yeah. So and you called up or you kind of got in touch with Rohan? Actually, I did. Yeah. But actually, my first uh, port of call was actually Abhik. Okay. So he was the one who actually had to thank for this job because yeah. he was the one who got in touch with Rohan and said, uh -huh. hey, why don't you just check out this guy, Ronak? Yeah. Um, he's keen on making a move, so why not? Yeah, super. So man. that's how it happened. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the industry, you know, people in the, in the industry, um, the outside world expects them to be like automobile engineers or yeah, people who have yeah, done some kind yeah. of journalism specific to automotive. I don't quite agree to that, actually. Yeah, man. But, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, being... Consider, I mean, take me as an example. Uh, I have a, I have a graduate. I'm a graduate in basically a commerce right. degree, right? Uh, and I've got a liberal arts degree from Symbiosis in Pune. Right. Uh, it has nothing to do with auto. engineering. Nothing to yeah, do with man. auto. I just don't understand this. Where this requisite that some people have yeah. that you need to have a you know an engineering background. Right. It's not true. Yeah. Um, I think I've mainly by the amount of years I've been here, I think it goes to show that you can kind of make it as long yeah, as you and, put and in the hours. stands true to a lot of the people in the industry, including some of the big, big names. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I mean, even I have, I've done journalism, so I understand the journalism aspect of right, it, but I've right, always right. been an enthusiast. So Absolutely. autos come naturally to me, like being around motorcycles, you know, for as long as I can remember. So, and I think that's the, that's the case with a lot of the industry as well. So you've been around for a good seven years? Yeah, roughly. Yeah. More or less. When was the first time you heard of Power Drift or you saw a video of Power Drift? Wow. I think, uh, I, my first just, I think, I mean, my first Viewing of Power Drift was online on yeah. a YouTube video, yeah. of course. And um, 
Yeah, what really struck me, I think back then, I think it was a Sagar Shieldekar review. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because that's those were really huge on, and back in the day. Yeah. And um, no, I mean, what really, really attracted me to part of videos or what I really appreciated about them was the fact that they were made so bloody well. I mean, yep. like, it just, there was nothing around like it, yeah. essentially. Yeah. And uh, in a sense, ever since then, I've always had an eye out for yeah. uh, your videos. I mean, now our videos. And... Uh, it's just a huge honor to just be here and be yeah. part of and breathe the team essentially that yeah. uh, does this kind of work. Yeah. It's if massive. you don't know this, AJ sir, who's, I mean, there's a person who's standing behind the camera, AJ. Yeah. yeah. He has been around since PTR days. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. sir, it's been what, eight, seven years? Good, good, good seven years wow. at Power Drift. Wow. Yeah. So he's, if, uh, you know, some of you guys who loved the earlier videos, AJ yeah, Sir yeah. is partly responsible for making those. So it's been a long journey, man. I mean, for me as well, it's it been what, more than five years now at Power Drift and it's been amazing. But um, did you have like any kind of inhibition when you were talking to Rohan or? Oh, huge, huge, yeah? huge. I mean, I had uh, plenty of uh, nerve wracking nights where I was just like, am I doing the right thing? You know, because... Uh, writing for print and doing videos is a huge change. Right. Um, uh, there's so much to go into. I mean, and there's so much to just l relearn and learn again and just do it all over, you know? Right. So it's a little, it's a little, still a little nerve wracking for me. Right. But uh, I think one of the things that Rohan told me was that, look, it's going to be a little bit overwhelming in the starting. But the point is that you just stick around and just go with it and just be a part of everything as much as you can yeah. till you get used to it. Yeah. And it's nothing more than that. Yeah. It's just an acclimatization period. That's right. It. And and you started with cars at Power Drift. I mean, BMW yeah. is your real first project and I think you're going to be more towards the four wheels, uh, the Absolutely. side of four wheels than, than two. But we were having a chat before coming to the studio and, and you love motorcycles as well. Absolutely. Uh, it's not that I don't like riding bikes or don't prefer bikes. It's just, uh, at the end of the day, I've just always been a little more comfortable with cars. Yeah. Uh, grown up, loving them. I mean, actually, the f where it really started for me was my brother was very much huge into cars. I mean, mm -hmm. like, he uh, basically showed me the way. Mm -hmm. uh, not intentionally, not like, oh, you have to do the same things I'm doing. But right. essentially, I always looked up, looked up to him, kind of doted on him actually right and uh, yeah that kind of turned into my, like a passion of my own and right. uh, after a while when I got the opportunity to write for a magazine I decided to I mean I realized that you know this is also something I enjoy doing so just kind of married the two you know yeah. uh, journalism with yeah. kind of cars as a passion yeah but so. uh, like like some of us have always been around motorcycles or cars and you know grown up either riding them or driving them or sitting in the driver's seat or stuff like that when was that first connection? I mean, if you remember it, I do. what was that first connection I that do. really happened which made you say, I'm doing this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah actually, interestingly enough, again, back to my brother, um, he used to do these little uh, spontaneous trips with his friends right. uh, in our then Ford Icon. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that, yeah. that, that 1.6 engine yeah. just, just, just spoke to me then. I mean, that was my first proper experience where I was like, whoa, this is something that could be fun, you know? Yeah. And uh, I remember it was on a, I don't remember which beach, but I remember we were driving on a beach. Okay. Uh, and essentially being a little bit, uh, since it was a free area, there were no people around. Yeah. My brother just said, yeah, go for it. Take yeah, the yeah. wheel. <laughs> that's how you actually yeah. start. That's like, how you start. Yeah, yeah, you just go just for go it for and it. then you're like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, before you know it, it's just spiraled into a huge passion of mine. Yeah. And uh, yeah, ever since then. And how old were you back then? Uh, I would have been what twenty or four. That's fourteen years old. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when it's I started. Legal boys and girls. That's illegal, but <laughs> let's just let's not go there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's how it started for me. Uh, it's it's been a roller coaster ever since then, yeah. and but it's been a fun one. Nothing that I can complain about as such. Yeah. But uh, yeah, fun. Yeah, all the way. And 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 through the course of seven years, you have, or you know, professionally, you have driven cars for like seven years, and before that, you have driven cars in driven general. Cars. Yeah, yeah. And that means you have driven a lot of cars. Sure. Which one's your favorite? Wow. Uh, this it's so difficult for us. This no? question always stumps me. I just can never figure out an answer yeah. to this because I have an answer uh, to the bike that I really like. But yeah, we'll go sure. to the car, uh, car but first. Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah. Actually, I'm quite interested in knowing that. But yeah. uh, as of now, honestly. My answer is, look, there are obviously poster heroes. I mean, yeah. 
sure people don't have posters anymore yeah. <laughs> that they pin up on their walls anymore but you know it's all about the internet and stuff like that yeah. but at the end of the day there's always a hero card out there yep. and for me it's i mean i keep going back and forth here and there but it's always been the the stratos the lancia okay yeah that's been amazing for I me i think grand tour did like a special episode oh on that. Yeah. yeah absolutely it's so well made so i mean yeah. the entire content was so spot yeah. on yeah and it just spoke to me yeah and uh not to say that the stratos affinity started after that but it was right. way before that but right. yeah that just and why yeah. do you like it so much uh i liked it because essentially it was the underdog mm. uh it started off as the underdog no one really expected it to do as well at rally as it did um and my goodness the way it looks and especially the way it's been reimagined today for this i mean it costs a ridiculous amount but it's just such a special car and it has its quirks and that's what i like about cars you know in, in the sense that they're not i mean the imperfect ones may be imperfect but at the end of the day that's kind of what makes them perfect as well you know right. little twerks here and right. there and just it just kind of doesn't it all adds up in the end yeah, guess, yeah yeah super man so for so for me i mean i've ridden a lot of bike you know, yeah like yeah, from yeah. a commuter to like a good super bike and stuff like that and my recent attraction has been towards this one motorcycle which i can't just let go of and that's the pike speak 1260 wow yeah, okay it's yeah. uh, it just checks everything that i need from motorcycle in terms of performance comfort so i've got currently like a lot of people know i've got this 800 it's called toothless mm-hmm. and uh, you know i like touring or like going long distances with my wife as pillion she absolutely hates the z because it's so <laughs> uncomfortable and uh, the pike speak is just a motorcycle which kind of checks the biggest box which is pillion comfort right um and it's got performance it's got electronics and probably e- if i end up buying one it's it's uh, it's going to be there with me for a really long time okay but the only problem is the price because that that yeah. truck costs yeah. 26 lakh rupees on road ouch that's yeah that's 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 a big ouch so so how long have you had the z4 I've had the Z for uh, almost five years now. It's five been complete years now. five years in February. Super. Yeah, Super. and I've it's you know you have this certain uh, love towards a vehicle yeah, that you've yeah. really wanted. Yeah, so I've never yeah. wanted the Z. I've yeah. always wanted an inline four. That, there you go. This this proves my yeah. point again. Yeah. Is, was when you bought it, was it the bike that you like lusted after, or was it just a good bike at that it, point? It was just a good bike. Exactly. It. I mean, I. I wanted an affordable inline four. Yeah, yeah. And the only competition that the Z had back then was the Street Triple. Absolutely. And okay. after that whole controversy that happened uh, with the whole de- detuning bit, I was like, dude, it's a Kawasaki. A Japanese motorcycle can never go wrong. And it has not gone wrong because gone I wrong. changed my brake pads. My, I've not used I don't use a rear brake. So my front brake pads uh, were changed at 20,000 kilometers. Jesus. 20,000 kilometers. Wow. My Sprocket set is still up and running, and I think it should go on for an, at least another five or seven thousand odd kilometers. And my bike's done twenty five thousand kilometers. So I mean, it's 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 a motorcycle that if you've, you've wanted, uh, but you didn't want that motorcycle. It's that story. Sure, sure, it's that, sure. It's that love story. I completely get that. Yeah. 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 And uh, once you have it, you really want to take care of it, and uh, you know stuff like that. And it's been there for about four and a half years. And uh, and some of the. stand out attributes about the bike would be as you've gotten to know it better uh, over the years the one thing that i really like about the motorcycle is the refinement okay. i've never ridden a motorcycle which is as refined as the Z800 yeah but i, I guess re- that's to be expected with inline 4 right with inline 4 or a japanese yeah. inline 4 yeah. 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 yeah i mean i i i don't remember how the Z900 felt because it's been a while since i rode it right but the Z800 at um, in the 6th gear at 95 km per hour exactly that it feels so i've got an exhaust but if you remove and if you go back to the stock exhaust it feels like you're sitting on a magic carpet okay it just is so <laughs> refined yeah. yeah but i've got the exhaust on and a lot of people have uh, you know known the story of my exhaust falling off my motorcycle oops yeah that's it's 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 in it's there in the ibw video Wait, were you Thousand riding it and then it fell off, or yeah, was yeah. it stationary? You know, <laughs> oh lord, <laughs> I was riding it. We were doing this video on India Bike Week, two thousand and sixteen. Sixteen, sir, two thousand and sixteen, and I remember it so vividly. The RF, I mean, Rohan was on his RSV for factory back then, not right. the RF. Right. And uh, between, I think after a little after Satara, we saw this clear patch of road. Rohan gets on the gas, and I try to chase him. and i overtake him and 
I just hear like a huge explosion. And I'm thinking, damn, my engine's blown, man. It's <laughs> apocalypse now. Yeah. <laughs> and I look in the rearview mirror and I see the SC project like rolling towards the RSV. Oh, but I'm like, oh shit. But that's, I mean, you know, we managed to like weld it back and there was right. some problem with the fitting. So right. that's the story of that. But getting back to you, dude. Sure, sure. Uh, how different is print from videos? Uh, okay. So initially, I would have said it's night and day. Yeah. Uh, but the more I'm getting used to it, the more I'm realizing it's... I mean, it's a subtle change. Right. It's you can call it a subtle and a drastic change at the same time, mm. in the sense that look, at the end of the day, you're still putting in the hours. You're still, you know, uh, there's a ton of effort required right. on both ends. Right. It's just that the medium in which you do it that changes. Yeah. And um, I mean, I can tell you stories of like plenty of times uh, over the last few years that we've just had to slog away in the office, you know, for like. A good four or five days straight. Yeah, just closing the issue. You know, closing yeah. the issue by closing the issue. I mean, getting yeah, it man, ready for print. Yeah, man, give us some dope on when an issue closes and stuff like that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I will not speak about <laughs> motoring's uh, issue closings, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, it it all depends on a few things like you know how long it takes to turn around the magazine. So right. essentially, once you're done with writing everything, correcting everything, editing it all. Uh, you need to essentially send it to print. Now you need to figure out how long your printer is going to take to print it, and then you need to figure out how long it's going to take from the printers to the newsstands. Right. And uh, basis that you decide a closing date. So you work backwards. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, different. You know, uh, magazines have different schedules for this. So typically, what you're looking at is. Uh, if you want to hit stands on, let's say, the first of November, which is coming up, uh, you would have ideally closed your. If you have a turnaround time of let's say a week, you close by the twenty third or twenty fourth of the previous month. Okay. Yeah, uh, that doesn't always happen. And and this close <laughs> means uh, closing the printing as well, or it's just the sending of the. Ah, uh, just sending of the this thing okay. to sending of the articles and everything, okay. all the PDFs, right, so that it can be printed. Okay. And then the process starts. And how long does it usually take to get uh, a magazine printed? Like, um, honestly, with the two people, I've, I mean, two magazines that I've been with, uh, it's. Usually, Autica. Usually, I think I don't know what they do now, but when I was there, it was I think a three-day turnaround time. Okay. And uh, motoring took a little bit longer. Okay. They probably took like a week. Yeah. But uh, that's just because of the volume of magazines that mm -hmm. they have. You know, they have roughly. I mean, I think they have more than thirty titles on hand. Okay. So I mean, wow. it's a huge publishing house. So what do you think is tougher, magazines? I mean, you've done one shoot at Power Rift, and yeah. you said yeah. it's it was like eleven days shoot. So yeah. what do you think yeah. is tougher, like print or getting a shoot done? For now, I definitely think uh, you know being on the video side of things, yeah. that's infinitely tougher. Yeah. Uh, but I, that's a little personal again because I'm still grappling with how yeah. schedules work. Yep. I'm not used to it yet. I still need to get in the groove of things. I'm just probably, what, like three weeks old now in, at Power Drift. And uh, yeah, essentially, it's it's a learning process for me, which yeah. is why I find it so hard. Yeah. Uh, ask me this question again in probably two months. Yeah. Maybe I'll have a different answer. Yeah, sure. I, I think... Uh, Making a video requires a lot of effort. Yeah. Requires yeah, a lot of yeah. patience, energy. Um, going back to the IBW episode that we did, I still remember coming to office at 3 a.m. And we were doing a travel story. Right. Now, if I remember this correctly and without any offense to anyone, and if I get this right, what happens in print is you go from one location to another location. Right. Um, you take pictures. Mm -hmm. Um. And you're pretty much done with that. Pretty much. Pretty yeah, much. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. I mean, the big job of writing. Yeah, I mean, understanding remains. a vehicle and yeah, you yeah, cover yeah. a certain distance. Yeah. You don't take a lot of stops. Um, and you go there, you collect your thoughts and then you maybe make pointers and get back and write it. Yeah. yeah. If you have a camera guy traveling with you, you click pictures on the way and that's that. Yeah. Uh, I still remember coming to office for the IBW video at 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. By the time we left office, I think it was about... 6 a.m. Okay. okay. Because there was a shoot that was planned in office. Ouch. So, yeah, there was like a setup and, uh, you know, we have to rehearse a take. and, and No, and it's so. it's different challenges. In my head, it's, uh, it's, it's I, I can't compare them yet because yeah. I'm not really fully through the grind. But yeah. the way I'm looking at it is, you know, uh, sure, you have a bit of leeway uh, yep. when you're in a print situation yeah. wherein you're, you shoot the story and uh, at that point, it's only about the photographers and right. you know what kind of shots they need. Right. You have the time after that as a journalist to kind of 
figure out what you want to write yeah. you have a few days of a lead right uh whereas in video it's kind of on the spot yep, uh, the, the spot. videographers the dops yep. everyone works at the same time right. you have to give your lines there and there itself and uh, this way i mean this precious little you can do yeah. uh, in post right um but at the end of the day i believe that they've both acquired kind of skills yep. that uh both requires equal yeah. uh, footage or importance i think but just adding to that bit we started from pune at 6am yeah yeah and we were doing this shoot with our good friends from uh, goa mm-hmm. we've got uh, this really i mean this really cool group that we have associated ourselves with since a long time it's called gears gears goa shout out to you guys uh we asked them to wait at amboli um, at around i think no not chorla we were going through chorla sure. so we asked them to uh, meet us at chorla at i think 1130 because we were shooting along the way and stuff right. like that yeah. we ended yeah. up reaching yeah. there by i think 4 4:30 ouch then we had a small shoot sequence there and by the time we reached our hotel it was about 10:30 pm Oof. so yeah it was like an 18 and and with motorcyclists it's 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 the fact that you're wearing riding gear all the time right so you're right. in riding right. your uncomfortable shoes you know you're wearing a helmet for 18 19 hours straight which is yeah, yeah. yeah which is a crazy thing but uh, yeah man i mean i mean print stuff I feel video stuffer. Okay. And okay. Uh, I think all these shoot schedules. I mean, sure. I'm. I'm sure you'll have longer sure. days at Power Drift as yeah, well, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, you'll understand or probably get a grasp of how videos function. But uh, you know, when was it that you really decided to make the switch to Power Drift or maybe video, not just Power Drift? Um, I think. Uh, okay. Now different people have different opinions on this. Uh. Mm-hmm. mine just happens to be the one that i actually followed through with mm-hmm. but uh, different people have like i said different mm-hmm. opinions yeah. uh essentially a lot of people are of the opinion that uh, print is kind of dying mm-hmm. a slow death yeah. uh i still believe they have a few years mm-hmm. in them but um you know i i just decided to stop and pause and look at my daily yeah. routine you know how do i consume information and uh, you know i just consciously made an effort to just figure out what i'm doing every day and i i realized that a lot of it is just consuming videos right. just consuming um, you know stuff on youtube or instagram or twitter yeah. and uh, while i am a big fan and i still do read a fair bit uh, like actual books <laughs> but i just realized that this holds an equal importance in my life as well to consume knowledge on a daily basis not not knowledge information right and uh, i think the more i kind of understood that fact realized that fact the more i decided that you know what okay fine it's not like i haven't done the print bit i've spent my time i've done a fair bit a right. uh, fair amount of years uh but you know and i kind of got the hang hang of it mm-hmm. after 7 years i hope i had the hang of it mm-hmm. but uh yeah i figured it's time for a change yeah. and uh yeah early this year is when i decided you know let's start looking out yeah. you know maybe now's the time to do it because there are a lot of people who are doing video but yeah. uh i saw precious few that were doing it as well as padrift and that's why my first port of call was padrift yeah and and how did it officially get confirmed like was ron was ron like hey you know what dude you're on board uh here's the funny bit yeah. okay now um so when i was in talks with ron we kind of met at a bar right below the office which is oh. so cool by the way oh. son yeah, of that a was gun. son of a gun <laughs> yeah that was where my interview was uh wow. yeah it was a long interview we spoke about yeah i think about... all the interviews at powder have happened like cool places yeah, yeah. man that's, that's that was pretty cool yeah <laughs> and uh yeah we were just chatting over drinks and uh, ron was like look honestly this is not an interview uh this is just a friendly meet up mm-hmm. and i just want to know more about you yeah so you know and we just spoke for like an hour and a half maybe two uh he got to know everything worthwhile knowing about me and then we kind of went our own ways and uh after that i you know kept on asking rohan follow up questions i mean yeah. stuff that i couldn't think of on the day itself and uh yeah i mean but there was no real confirmation that you yeah. know what okay cool why don't you just get on board now yeah. uh, uh but after a certain point rohan was like i said look uh, i'm interested i'm keen uh if you are so he's like yes definitely let's do it and um so i said great please if you could send me the paperwork so yeah. i can kind of tell my current employers that look i'm leaving uh that'd be great yeah so 
he's like yeah sure uh, but one thing led to another i think our cfo got dengue yeah. in the middle so he's like uh, sorry the paperwork is a bit delayed yeah yeah so even today yeah. uh, it's been what 3 weeks into my job and yeah. i still don't have an offer letter <laughs> yeah wow super <laughs> i just yeah. have a small line from rohan saying yes you You're can confirmed. come on board <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's awesome dude yeah. um you know you're you've joined in as a car guy yeah. and yeah. um you know you're having a chat you still have that affection towards motorcycles yeah. have yeah. you ever reviewed a motorcycle um yes i've done a few of them okay not too many but when was the last time you did it Oh, uh, when was the last time I did it? I think I rode the Benelli. What's the Toro called? The 600i? The 600 GT. GT. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I think that was my last one. I had oh, wow. more. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Yeah. It's been a long time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've ridden pretty much everything, but reviewed. Yeah. Uh, no, that was. And when was the one. last time you rode a motorcycle? Wow. Uh, I've. I bought an Entoc okay. from TVS. Yeah. So yeah, that was the last scooter that I rode, not a motorcycle. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh. But before that, I think the last fun bike that I rode was my brother's Z800. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. He uh, also has uh, one, by uh, the way. Uh, also. <laughs> Super. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I had a blast on that. I just yeah. love that thing. He's yeah. also had it for like around close to five years now. Yeah. So yeah, that was my last big bike. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna work on changing that. Yeah. Yeah. Please. We're gonna hopefully. Please. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we get motorcycles by the plenty, yeah, and yeah. you know, I mean, we had the BMW shoot, and I was lucky enough to keep keep the six GT for like a couple of days. And right, yeah. dude, there is something about cars as well. There is something about cars. Um, I don't like them as much. I like motors. Obviously, I like motorcycles. Sure, but sure. Yeah. It's when you sit inside that car and you're, you know, cocooned in that lap of luxury. Yeah, it feels yeah, different. Yeah. It feels nice. But then at the end of the day, it's back to motorcycles. It's back to motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're no. also working on this really cool project. By the way, uh, we're gonna pit a motorcycle against a car. Yeah, soon, very soon. I think by the time this podcast goes out, that video should will, be. Yeah, 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 yeah. It should be out. Yeah, be yeah. We're, gonna, yeah. we're planning to release it in the first week of November, and um, yeah, if all goes well, then we will have the. The Z4 and the S1000 RR, right? And if not the S1000 RR, then we might have the R1250 GS. Yeah, yeah. Don't so, hold us to this right now. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's still a work in progress, yeah. but yeah, you. You'll but I'm sure something. by the time this podcast goes live, I mean, it's it should yeah. be out in the open. Yep, yep, yep. Ah, uh, our peeps are also in Tokyo. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll be getting you the Tokyo Motor Show coverage as well. I'm sure um, you'll see a lot of videos on our channel about all the new motorcycles. from the japanese manufacturers as well as uh, yeah by the way ducati's uh, i think today's 23rd today's 23rd yeah 23rd. yeah so ducati's got like a special showcase they might show the v4 street fighter which is like an interesting motorcycle yeah, yeah. so so to believe it's making over 200 hp so for a naked motorcycle that's same amount of yeah, power yeah, on yeah, yeah. and um, after tokyo we're heading to aikma mm-hmm. so there's just a lot of video content that's coming, coming your way. way yeah, yeah. it was really yeah. nice talking to you Thanks, Ronald, man. hopefully Likewise. we'll have another um podcast and Absolutely. hopefully we'll talk yeah, about yeah. or go in depth with these auto shows love to yeah next guest love to. on par rift is going to be a very 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 special person oh yeah and that's amit shetty lovely yeah i'd for love people, to see that guy on a podcast yeah for people who do not know amit shetty amit shetty is actually the co-founder of par rift so he's the one who stayed behind the camera and yeah. uh, a lot of these crazy edits that have taken place in the past amit shetty has been partly responsible or wholly yeah. respons- yeah. responsible for that so he's our next guest and i'm sure a lot of you guys would love to hear his story too but for now i think it's going to be bye bye from ajinkya and i ajinkya yep. ajinkya is also a name so i'll ajinkya is also a name yeah, yeah it's a little confusing but yeah, yeah technically my yeah. name is ronak <laughs> yeah <laughs> ronak stick to that <laughs> ronak is going to be there in a lot of powder videos yeah. uh, so stay subscribed stay notified and we'll see you on another podcast yep. bye bye see you bye bye